everybody. Sean Daniel here with Guitar Control. Today we're taking on a kind of neo-classic Blue Jeans by Lana Del Rey. This is going to be an acoustic guitar version of it. We're going to talk a little bit about the main riff and the chords. Super simple. Three chords and the truth. This is a great example of how you don't really need a lot of, uh, a lot of chord vocabulary to really make a cool song, right? So make sure to click the link below. I'm going to chord out and tab everything we're doing here. First things first, capos on the first fret to play in the original key, all right? Now, I bet you probably already know a little bit of these chords, but we're going to talk about how to play them to kind of capture more of the spirit of the song and how the main uh, riff kind of goes, goes along with them. So the chords, super easy. E minor, open, E, 2A, 2D, open all the way down. Again, when I say 2A, it's really the third fret because uh, relative to the capo. So this is the E minor chord shape but it's really an F minor chord in the grand scheme of things in reality, okay? So that's the first chord. Then we're gonna go to a D major chord. Two on the high E string, three on the B string, two on the G string, and then A major. Now, I want you to play the A major with your middle finger on the second fret of the D string, ring finger right behind it, pinky right behind that. You can always bar it, but we're gonna do a couple different things as far as like pull-offs. And suspensions to kind of get a little bit more of the original spirit of the song. So if you've ever heard the song, you know the main riff starts off like really, really easy riff. Open E, 2A, open D, 4D, 2D, A, 4A, A. Okay, now Again, you can play it just like that, but we're gonna do more of a singer-songwriter sty type style of that. And uh, the first part is gonna be really easy because we wanna hear the that part on an E minor chord. The best way to do that is to play the full chord, but hit the open E string, and then the chord, right? And then now the next part, the representative of this open D to uh, four D, these are just two notes in a D major chord. Right? Now, usually when you play this voicing, we don't always have this specific note in there. This would be like F sharp. We'll have this on top of the chord. Don't worry about it. It's just kind of like hitting that D major chord in there. So it's like an E minor, D major, A. And then we're gonna add that A suspended four in at the end. So I'm not gonna chord it out as suspended four because it's really just kind of like a flourish, I suppose. But in the in the song, as far as what she's doing vocally and what's happening with like the rest of the track, a lot of times you'll hear either this D note over an A chord or an open B over an A chord, which those are the two types of suspensions you can do with an A. That's why it's nice to use this voice where your pinky's on the top of the chord because you can just lift your pinky up to open it up, get a suspended two chord, is what it's called. Or put it on the third fret to get a suspended four chord. All right, so now if we have the whole progression, E minor, D, A, A, again, it would sound like this. Add that suspension, E again. Now that last thing I did with that D, the same thing. A lot of suspended chords are a great way to add a little bit more melodic content to a basic chord progression like an E minor D, A major progression. D, right just like we told you before, you can suspend it by adding your pinky. The pinky is really the, the hero of the suspensions, okay? E minor, D, suspended, A. That's why I, I think it's a really good song as far as really kind of keeping a chill vibe, but hitting the beats with the strums in a musical way instead of just like. Because, you know, even though that's like the, the, the tempo in the main part of the song, it doesn't really sound like you want to capture a lot of the openness of that main riff.
Now, another thing that you can do with that suspended two chord that we talked about with the A is to do a pull off during it because that's what she's doing vocally in a lot of it. Okay, so I'm getting a down stroke. And then on the up stroke, I'm kind of getting my pinky off of there. Just like that. All right, so really try to recreate the sound of that with the E minor, D, suspended A, ba, 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 good E minor. of the song is just like that. Now there is a breakdown where we're just going to go from E minor to D. So we're kind of leaving the A part out of it. And I think a good way to do that, and a great technique that you can start using for any kind of breakdown is palm muting, okay? So if we've got just the E minor back and forth to a D, which you'll see on the chord chart, that's why it's great to click that link below to kind of follow along with where these chords are happening in relation to the lyrics is a great way to kind of tag where those chords go, lyric-wise. Instead of just kind of, you know, boringly just kind of like going through the bars, which again, is totally fine if that's how you want to do it, and if that's the easiest way to sing and play at the same time. Just back and forth between that E minor and that D, it's fine, but I think there's a really good opportunity to maybe build a dynamic to get back to the open chords. The way to build that dynamic is by really heavily palm muting it. So you take the side of your hand, karate chop the bridge. And then do the same thing with the D chord. Two, three, four, and down, 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 down. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four bars, and then switch to D. Eventually, when you go back to the main part, dynamic and there's a little bit more of a storytelling that kind of goes along with that. Lana Del Rey, great writer, great lyricist that has her uh, definitely her own unique style and that's why I think when you uh, think about maybe covering a song like this, you want to kind of keep in the spirit of uh, what they're going for. Unless you want to just totally remake and redo it yourself, which is totally fine. I think this is just a couple, you know, techniques to maybe uh, add uh, a dynamic component to your strumming and then kind of get that same feel of space that the main riff in the original recording has. It kind of just kind of keeps going back and forth, dancing between these chords, and therefore kind of giving every chord a little bit of space to kind of do its thing. So, cool song, super easy song, learn it in 10 minutes or less. And uh, definitely, if you have any other song requests, uh, old classic-wise, new, new classic-wise, let us know and we will definitely try to get that done for you. Also check out other videos on the Guitar Control channel by myself, other great instructors. And uh, we've got a huge collection of songs, they're very taught. Really, look through them and like I said before, if there's anything you haven't seen, let us know and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Thanks a lot.